All right. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, Newman Portal a little bit. Now, I'm giving another talk on Newman Portal tomorrow, which will be a little bit more general, uh, more cover more of the resources in Newman Portal. But today, I'm, I'm going to uh, just do a couple case studies of uh, just a couple of metals uh, to give uh, an idea uh, to people how they might use them. All right, but uh, to give us a little bit of background, uh, we started uh, in 2014. Uh, this came about with the uh, sale of all the Newman collection, which happened uh, over a period of uh, several years from 2013 to 2018, uh, a series of uh, 11 sales that Heritage did. And uh, along with this and the, the revenue coming into the Newman Foundation, they wanted to find a way to give back to numismatics. And, uh, so what they uh, settled on was uh, an online platform, and uh, that's how uh, Newman Portal came about. And, uh, so with the sale of the, uh, the Newman collection, uh, they were able to take some of those funds and uh, steer them into this effort. All right, so uh, launched in uh, 2014, funded by the uh, Newman Foundation. Uh, I call it, it's Evans, but I, I call it foundation. There's actually multiple Newman Foundations, and this is, as it turns out, the smallest one. Um, uh, Evans was started in 1959 uh, by Eric Newman, and uh, it actually supported quite a number of things before this, uh, including uh, the Newman Money Museum, which was in St. Louis, uh, the uh, AS Graduate Seminar uh, is, has, been, has been endowed by uh, Evans. Uh, Provided a lot of funding for uh, a and a summer seminar as well, and uh, other programs. So, several foundations uh, still within the Newman family, uh, of which this is the smallest one. The Newman portal itself is administered by Washington University. So the foundation provides money to the university. I'm an employee of the university, uh, and I, I do this on a full-time basis. We have one other employee within the university that's allocated to this project, and we use a lot of uh, other contractors besides that. Okay, so what exactly is NMP? Uh, it's a searchable online repository of documents, images, related databases, um, primarily related to American numismatics. Um, we're, we are going to start doing some more things with ancient numismatics, and we've got some resources on that already. We're going to be doing some more in that area. We've got over 10,000 auction sale catalogs on there. Um, the Martin Genger Key Bibliography of American Numismatic Auctions has 18,000 items listed in it. And when, when we started it, the idea that we could actually get every single one of those was kind of unthinkable. But you know, here we are a few years later, 10,000 auction sale catalogs. Um, a lot of periodical issues, including publications of uh, the MCA, um, a lot of videos. Um, David Lizzo has been going to numismatic conventions since the 1980s and taping presentations. We've got 2,000 of those presentations on um, um, And then a lot of reference books, um, about 1,400 books. And then a lot of archival items. Uh, we do a ton of work at the U.S. National Archives. Uh, scanning the documents and correspondence. The uh, general correspondence group of the National Archives, um, it's about 200 boxes, runs from the 1790s through about uh, 1900. Uh, we're about 80% of the way through that series. And there's lots of other series that will continue after that. And a lot of our content is, it's not on Google Books, it's not on Honey Trust. So, Google Books backed up their truck to the Harvard University Library or the University of Michigan Library. Harvard University would not have plated Chapman catalogs. Um, they would not have the Mount Collector's Advisory, unless you send them a copy, which I doubt. Um, so a lot of these things would not be online unless we were doing that. All right, and then we're also a community resource. We've had a lot of organizations, a lot of individuals who say, oh, here's my content. I'd really like to share this with everyone. And New and Portal is an ideal way to do that. And uh, the BMCA has its back issues on there um, uh, through about uh, 2015 or something like that. They're all available on there. All right, and so uh, we're set up in a few different places. Um, 
primarily at Washington University in St. Louis. We have uh, scanning activities that happen there. Uh, we are also uh, have a full-time scan person at American Numismatic Society. They obviously have a tremendous library, so uh, a lot of really good material we've been able to get out from there. And then we have uh, contractors that go into the uh, National Archives in Philadelphia and uh, also in College Park, Maryland. All right, so let's uh, just talk for a minute about what we're not. Okay, so we are we are not a peer-reviewed academic journal. There are a lot of there are other people working in that area. The Journal of Early American Numismatics is awesome. Uh, the American <coughs> Journal of Numismatics is again awesome. Um, or other academic journals on history and other subjects that occasionally touch on numismatics. Um, we are not that. We are uh, an online digital library and. When you use resources on the portal, you have to exercise the exact same care that you would exercise with resources from a physical library. Um, and we're not a substitute for a physical library either. Um, the printed page, the printed book, is still sort of the best preservation we have. We have texts from hundreds, thousands of years ago um, on, 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 on the printed page, and, and certainly uh, printed since the 1400s. Um, and that's that's proven. And digital technology, 50 years maybe that we're into this, um, and uh, certainly we're doing everything we can to improve preservation in that area. But the, the printed page is still sort of the uh, authority of record here. Um, and documents, I think, also they give you a tangible connection with uh, the subject material. Um, you know, if you're using a copy of that's if you have like the original printing. Uh, you have a connection with the author that you just aren't going to get if you look at it online. Even if the information is the exact same, even if the information is the exact same, the, the physical object just has a, has a way of talking to you. So we can't replicate that. We never will, um, but we can provide the information. So we're really more of an evolution of what the physical library is, um, more an adjunct to it. Um, a lot of times, if I find a, a resource online. And I happen to have a copy of my library. I'll go grab it because that's what I'm used to using. So I that's what works for me. The next generation may be different, but we'll see. Okay, so let's talk about uh, NMP just uh, uh, with uh, more particular uh, regard toward movement collect or toward uh, metal collectors. Um, metals are. A good fit for NMP. Um, a lot of times you can just take the inscription from a metal and type it into NMP. Um, uh, the, the metals themselves have text that uh, often is a, a good key toward uh, finding stuff. And if it's something obscure or some weird Latin phrase, even better. Um, it's a better chance that you'll find a good content. And then if you happen to know where. Uh, uh, Metal sold or an important collection, you can go directly to the uh, auction sale catalog. All right, so we're going to do a, a little case study here. Uh, I was at the ANA summer seminar a few years ago. Uh, John Kralievich and I believe Eric Goldstein were teaching a class, and the, the homework was uh, they gave everyone random numbers and they said, go look up the bets number and give us a five minute report tomorrow. Uh, so you were supposed to go to the ANA library and find stuff. Newman Portal was just getting started, and I thought, wow, this would be a good exercise for Newman Portal. Let's just use NMP for this. Um, so anyway, I, I chose a random number. I chose 418 because that happens to be my birthday. I have no idea what it is, but um, I sort of did a, a little exercise walking through NMP to see what I find out about this. Um, so type in that's 418, you get 32 results. Um, variety of periodicals and auction catalogs. And uh, when you look at the results, you have to sort of interpret them. It's, it's going to be the best resource. Um, there will be a lot of things listed. Uh, you might not recognize some of them, some of them you will. Um, in this case, there's a hit in the MCA advisory. So I'm like, that's probably a good source. Let's, let's go look and see what we can find there. All right, and uh, in this case, we get uh, an MCA advisory article from February 2005, written by David Mitchell. 
<laughs> um, and it describes a 1759 victory medal uh, commemorating British military victories um, since uh, 1758. I guess the idea was that they would do these like on an annual basis for all the all the battles they won in the last year. Yeah. Um, and uh, so David's got a really good write-up in, in the MCA here. Uh, a really super nice image of the medal and uh, some descript descriptive text about it, some of the, the metrology and um, uh, different uh, variants of the medal, and uh, then I think some auction appearances for uh, where, where it's listed. And you, you can drill down in the auction appearances and then see what the catalogers had to say about it. Okay. All right, so there is uh, yet another, going back to our list of search results, uh, the Yang and S Magazine was listed. Um, and you know that's going to be a good source. So uh, we drill into that and find uh, an article by uh, Oliver Hoover that uh, draws parallels between the fall of New France in North America around 1760 to the fall of uh, ancient Judea in uh, AD 70. Um, and he uh, draws a parallel between those, those two events. Um, and then further down in his description, um, there's a couple other references here. So he talks about this Hawkins 445. I have no idea what Hawkins is, but we're going to find out. Um, and he also talks about this um, inscription on the medal, uh, Perfidia Aversa. And we can type that into NMP, and we get 18 NMP matches. So let's uh, drill down a little bit more here. Um, we also get it in our we'll look at those in a minute, but we also get um, search results uh, listing appearances of this that's 418 medal. Uh, we find this one in uh, Rare Point Review from 1982, an example of grass. Uh, another one in 2012 in Heritage, part of the Adam Sale. And uh, then we get an older one from uh, the Chapmans in 1904. And uh, here it's listed as uh, LaRue 861. I've never heard of LaRue. Um, I assume it's some kind of reference, some kind of reference book. Um, it's not listed in uh, the NMP library. Um, so let's use NMP and see if we can figure out what LaRue is. Um, I also have a nit. A lot of times, auction catalogers put in references like this, like LaRue 861. There's nothing in the catalog that tells you what it is. It's like you're just supposed to know. Um, but a, a lot of the better auction catalogs, they'll have a really nice bibliography and you can look up all the reference books that they use. Okay, so when using NMP, if, if you just use it from the home page, um, it's, it's exact search only. So uh, if you enter in like a two or three word phrase, it's going to look for that exact phrase. Uh, there is a sort of a looser search that you can do. Um, it's on this uh, our search page. And what it will do is you can enter the two or three team terms you're looking for, and if they appear on a page in any location, uh, it'll highlight that page. So this is uh, often useful when you have a couple related words. You know they're going to be on a page somewhere, you don't know what order they're going to be in. Um, so we type in this, this loser search, say, I want to show me pages that have LaRue, show me pages that, that have both LaRue and Betts. And uh, we, look, we look at our search results. Um, there's a Wade Raymond publication that includes um, a list of books. And what we're looking for is probably a book, so that's a good place to start. And uh, so we get uh, Wade Raymond's coin topics for uh, April 1936. Um, and it offers something called uh, a book called Joseph LaRue's Canadian Coin Cabinet, uh, which is said to be a listing of coins, tokens, and medals. Um, it's published in 1888. So um, this would be a good book to find. Um, so the first thing I do is I go look for a public domain copy of this book. Um, and uh, there are a lot of public domain books on Google Books, on Hobby Trust, on other locations on the internet. Um, 
So, and uh, with this public domain material, we can just copy that and copy it onto the new portal. Um, so in this case, uh, we actually found uh, this book, uh, The Canadian Coin Cabinet, in the uh, digital library of hobbytrust.org. Um, and then from there, um, so that this is uh, uh, the, the LaRue 861 medal, uh, the same as that's 418 from this uh, Canadian coin cabinet. Um, so that's an interesting volume. It's, um, it's completely in English and French. It's half a page in English, half a page is French. And uh, so I took the public domain copy here and uh, handed it to NMP. So now we have the LaRue reference on NMP, and you see that uh, in the auction sale catalog. Uh, now you know what it is, and you can um, go reference that. Um, so there's probably, I, I would suspect there's a few more med spells in there, but this one happens to be listed there. Um, we also saw um, the, I, let's see, go back here. We go back to our auction sale listing. Or the, 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 the reference in the AMS magazine, he mentioned uh, Optics 445. So um, that's kind of the next thing we want to look for. And uh, we found the Hopkins reference turns out to be um, something called the Dalek Illustrations of the History of Great Britain, uh, published in 1888, two volumes. Um, and again, uh, we were able to find a, a copy of uh, this Hopkins reference in the public domain and add that to NMP. So, um, so you you, uh, you know you see things they they leave you some other place and uh, uh, you see good references that should be on NMP. Go ahead and know. Okay. All right. So here's uh, another example. Um, it's uh, Rembrandt and Visitation, and I just randomly went to eBay, I typed in metal, and this, this one was on, on the page, so I'm like, okay, let's go see what we can figure out about this thing. Um, it's called a, uh, and the listing on eBay was uh, Sterling Silver Franklin Mint Genius of Rembrandt the Visitation, uh, and uh, so that, that's, that's the information to start with, we know it's something from the Franklin Mint. Um, so how can we figure out what it is? So, all right, so uh, again, we go into NMP and we do this uh, query. I want to see pages where Rembrandt is on the page and Visitation is on the page. And it comes back to two results. Uh, one is from the numismatist, um, and that one turns out to be not relevant. It's, uh, it's got those words on the page, but it's a different topic. Um, and then we find um, another listing in Coin World. Um, and it, this turns out to be a fixed price offering of uh, Franklin Mint medals from a superior ad in Coin World in 1978. And uh, the ad gives us usual information. It de details this whole genius of Rembrandt series. Um, it tells me uh, silver medals, uh, two ounce silver medals, and it gives me a whole list of medals in that series. This one turns out to be number 49. And then here is the, um, the point we'll add. So it gives you the prospectus for the whole series and uh, basically uh, the, the main information about it that you might want to know as a collector. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a typical two-page marketing piece that you would expect from Franklin and that period, but um, yeah, it's a good starting point for what's available there. All right, let's uh, talk about copyright a little bit. Um, so we have currently about 12,000 documents in the collection that are not available for full view. Um, Coin World is one of them. Um, so there's a, there's a few considerations here. A lot of the organizations who have contributed material to us um, you know, they give it to us on the basis that uh, you can put in all our old issues on NMP, but you know, hold back the last few years. We'd love to reserve those in, as a number of benefit. So, uh, and that makes perfect sense. Um, there's also uh, 
material that comes from commercial publishers like Coin World, Hispanic News, Women in Books publications, um, and they have a commercial interest in uh, maintaining this content uh, uh, within their own domain and not you know, necessarily sharing it with the whole people. So we still scan these kind of publications, and, and the reason we do it is because we can include them in search results. And from there, if it's something that you think is going to be really important to use for your research, you can go find a publication um, in a physical library or through some other place. Um, so we prefer to put things on with full view, um, but it, you know, it, stuff, stuff like uh, Coin World and, and Numismatic News is just stuff that needed to be scanned just for posterity, so we've done that. Um, Authors Guild versus Google in 2015 was a really kind of foundational case because this is the legislation or the, the legal decision that gives us the permission to scan something that's in copyright. Even if we don't make it available for full view, we can still make it available for search. Um, so it'll tell you that something's out there. Um, so this was uh, a, a really important uh, decision with respect to digitization and making information available to the extent that we can. Now, we do uh, have something called library fair use. Um, libraries have been copying articles out of journals forever, and sharing them with patrons or researchers, and we can do that. So if you see something in Coin World um, and you need to see an article, you can contact me. I'll share the article with you. I'm not going to share the whole issue. If you ask me for 500 different articles, I probably won't do that. But if it's a legitimate research request, I can do that. So. Um, so we, we have, a, have had a few requests for that. Um, uh, Nancy Oliver and Richard Kelly, two researchers in California who have written a lot for Point World. Uh, they had a, uh, they were a victim of the California fires a few years ago, lost their whole library, um, including their Point World articles. So they said, can you send us our old Point World articles? <laughs> so I, you know, I dug them up and uh, they were able to get them that way. So. Um, I've even had people from Coin World contact me asking me for old Coin World stuff because um, they don't necessarily have a digital access to it either. Um, all right, and then there, there's something else coming down the pipe. This is, there's a lot of discussion about this in, in the library world right now. Uh, it's this thing called control, control digital lending. Uh, the idea is that um, with physical books, if a library has a book, they can loan it out. One, you know, they give it to somebody, it comes back. They give it to somebody else, it comes back. Um, now that the next sort of frontier is, libraries are saying, okay, if I have an electronic copy of something, can I lend it out in electronic form, in a, in a controlled PDF that will uh, only be available for a couple weeks, get it returned in a couple weeks or possibly sooner, and then loan that electronic copy off to somebody else. Um, and the publishers don't like this. Um, uh, they, they want to sell printing copies. Uh, and they know if someone can borrow an electronic copy, they're less likely to buy a printed copy. But you know, the libraries are saying, look, I bought this physical book, I scanned it, I should be able to set this book aside well, I'm loaning out an electronic copy of that book. Um, so this is being litigated right now. It'll probably take a few years. Um, but eventually we may get to the place where we can say, um, you know, uh, if somebody wants to donate a book to us, we can scan it, we can set that book aside, and then we can start loaning electronic copies of that book, even if the book is in copyright. Uh, even even if it's a recently published book, so we're you know we're watching this. We'll see where it goes, but I think uh, it, this will probably go all the way up to the Supreme Court, like the other Google Books decision. Um, but uh, this I think would increase access to information a lot, uh, depending on how it goes. So that's kind of one thing we're thinking about for a few years from now. Okay, so a few other things going on. Uh, we have. Uh, 
Newman, Newman, Newman Numismatic Portal Symposium coming up in October. Uh, we did this, uh, when was the last one? This year? March. March, okay. <laughs> we did this in March. We had some great presentations um, on metals. Um, so we definitely encourage people uh, to participate again. We are soliciting speakers, so if anyone would want to present on their favorite topic, we'd be more than happy to have you. What's that? Where is it going to be? It's, it's all online. So it's all, it's all Zoom based. So uh, we had probably about a thousand registrants for the last event on, was great. on, on a variety of topics. Uh, so if anyone's interested in presenting in, in, in this one in October, we'd be happy to have you. I'm just talking to myself or Juliana, who's here, uh, after the meeting, and we'll get you taken care of. Uh, <coughs> so we had about, uh, about 40 speakers over a three day period, um, and uh, that was very well received. Um, Sam Vera, we are uh, doing some things with our software um, in terms of changing the back end. Uh, the front end, what you see, should not change a lot, but we do hope to improve our search capabilities uh, through some of the software improvements. So that's happening in the background. Um, we're adding a big Colonial Paper Money collection next week. I'll be out uh, on the West Coast doing some uh, helping with some photography work for that. So we're continuing to add image collections to the site, and uh, we're still uh, working on the the new papers. We continue to add those. Uh, a lot of these colonial files on uh, colonial Kong image have been uh, well received by researchers in those specific areas. Um, shared some Connecticut material with uh, Randy Martin a few weeks ago who just published a book on the topic and he said, uh, well now i got to start the next edition. <laughs> so that, that, was, that, was, uh, that was good to hear. Um, and then uh, tomorrow at 2 o'clock um, I'll be talking more about MMP in general and some of the more uh, the, the, the other considerations and, and administration. Um, but I did want to share uh, this with you in terms of, you know, we're working on metals, um, how we use NMP, and how can we learn more about uh, a specific metal using NMP. All right, um, I'll take uh, any questions. Yeah, yes? Uh, can you, uh, if an author has a book that he doesn't want uh, disseminated, mm -hmm. uh, but um, can supply it as a PDF. Mm -hmm. Can it be viewable but not downloadable? I'll give them maybe screenshots. Not, not currently. Um, what we, the best thing to do with that is we can take it and scan it, make it searchable, but not viewable. So uh, that would maybe be a compromise there. But yeah, I mean, a lot of authors, you know, there's still some print copies, and um, so they want to preserve that screen. And I get that. Yes, Bill. So um, a couple of years ago, I was using the advanced search. It's not immediately intuitive, but I guess I've done enough to yeah. figure it out. The one problem I ran into researching old catalogs, if it returned two pages of results, I could only see the first page. I mean, I, I've been modified to, so my search would only return one page, but I could never get to the second page of that. And so as you, as you change some of the software and so forth, are you looking at those kinds of issues? Yeah, I think um, that's that's probably a viewer issue. Um, and I, I probably actually can walk you through that. Um, so if that's the case, you can email me. Our, our email is on the front page of NMP. Um, I think we can walk you through that problem. Should be, should be able to resolve that. I have, I have the same problem on my cell phone, but I, I know on the, the, the computer I can make that work. <coughs> yes? Is it uh, material that you can scan? Is it all officially published material? Do you have any people on published material? No, so you know, it's that's that sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, all the Newman papers are all unpublished. So, um, yeah, when we get our archival material, yeah, so it's unpublished. And uh, we love archival material because it's unique and you, know, you can't get it at any other way. Yes. Uh, if I have a piece of literature that's unique or I stumble on a 
uh, and it's something that I think you might be interested in. How could I get it to you and how would you recommend uh, somebody get it to you? I don't want to give it away, right. but I'd like it to get on the portal and maybe I'll keep the, right. the thing. What most people do is um, ship, the, ship, ship, ship material in St. Louis, but I'll be honest, we've, with the pandemic, shipping has gotten really unreliable yeah. and we have a lot of shipping. Yeah. So, um, People are willing to take that risk. It's fine, but I, you know, I just want people to know before they send anything in. It's a risk. But I would contact you yeah. and, and tell you about it, I guess. And, right. and if you think it's worthy, then I can ship it yeah. to you. I mean, I would ship it to you, FedEx or, or <laughs> UPS. <Yeah. laughs> At this point, you know, I'm, not, I'm not very trusting of you as we ask. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. a comment on the question about published material. You mentioned the fact that you got some material that has been published on the portal. That's correct. Um, so Pete Smith just gave us a. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Pete just gave you something. Oh, he, he stepped out. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, Pete, Pete gave us a document <laughs> on uh, personal medals of uh, famous numismatists. So, yeah. Um, if you don't want to go through. The whole process of graphics and layout and going to print, um, you can just give us the document straight away and, and we'll post it. Very good, thank you very All much. Right. Any other questions? <laughs>